Welcome to Faith Encouraged. I'm Father Barnabas Powell, and the Orthodox Christian faith is meant to make you by grace what Christ is by nature. Being Orthodox on purpose takes focus and attentiveness, and we pray these homilies will help you do just that. Here's today's homily. I confessed something to you this morning, and I know for those of you who are younger than me, which is most of you, you may say, wow, he's such an old guy. He's such an old guy. And I am. I'm an old guy. But I've gotten to the point where I love watching documentaries. Isn't that horrible? Pretty soon I'm going to be sitting on the front porch, oh, you kids, get off my lawn. But I love watching documentaries. And there was a documentary that I was watching recently about um, ancient building uh, techniques. And did you know that even to this day, our scientists haven't quite figured out how Roman concrete was made? They've got some ideas, and they know there's potash in there, and there's, there's all kinds of different chemical makeups of it. But the Roman concrete, man, it's still around. And I don't know if you've seen any of the sidewalks or the, or the potholes in some of the, the, the roads that we have here in the richest country in the world, but our concrete just, it just doesn't last as long as this old Roman concrete. Stuff's still in there. In fact, it's interesting that the, they, would, they would create their, their ports and where, where the boats would come in. They would actually pour the concrete into the ocean water in the sand to, to set everything up. And the concrete would set up there in, in, in the ocean water. Now, it took longer for the concrete to set, but once it became set, it, it was harder than any, any modern concrete that we have today. Fascinating stuff. Of course, you've got this whole idea of how in the world these Egyptians built the pyramids. You see those huge buildings like that. And um, one guy came out to, on, on the Discovery Channel, and he said, Oh, it was aliens. It was aliens that did it. Aliens. Aliens are the ones that taught them how to do that. But, I mean, if you, if you uh, read some of this stuff and you look at this, some of these ancient construction techniques, I mean, there's a reason why there are still Roman roads in existence today. You can go to places and there's, this, there's the road still, still travelable. Amazing. Fascinating. And yet that construction method is absolutely essential for the fact that we have the buildings and even the ruins that we have today to know about the ancient world. Fascinating stuff. Building has always fascinated me because I have no aptitude for it. I just don't. I would much rather, you know, sing a song or, or uh, 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 read a poetry or read history or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just I don't have the aptitude to uh, be an, an engineer or, a, or an architect. I just don't. Number one, I don't like math. I don't like math at all. My daughter, my, four, my, four, my uh, 11-year-old daughter comes to me and says, will you help me with math? I said, baby, I'll be happy to try. And then she shows it to me and she said, and I, I don't know where in the world this happened, but so, I, I need to speak to someone in charge. When did they start putting letters in math, for heaven's sake? Oh, that was for... For reading, and, and, but I, mean, that's, I don't get it. Anyway, that's, that's just me. But I'll say all that to say this, that construction techniques are the way they are on purpose because if the construction is flawed, the structure is unsound. Does that make sense to you? In other words, if the engineering is off, if the math is off, if the measuring is off, the old uh, wise saying, measure twice, cut once. If the math is off, the building is unsound. If you have a home that you and your children are in that has been built with substandard techniques, your lives are in danger. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm, I'm making a point here, I promise, I really am. Because the Apostle Paul today tells our precious Corinthians, you know that me, I love those folks. They're my kind of people. What a messed up group of church people those people were. 
They had all kinds of problems. I talked to you about it last week, and they had all kinds of challenges that they were facing. Uh, and, and yet they were a dynamic group. They were powerful. They were really moving and shaking. They were growing fast in this very cosmopolitan Corinthian port city. But they had several, several problems. They were undisciplined in so many ways. They were very gifted, and yet they had no discipline, and consequently chaos was reigning in the church. And that's the reason why the Apostle Paul has to write two or possibly three letters. We have two of them, but there's probably a, th- there's probably a third one out there that, we did, that wasn't preserved. And I, just to give you an example, the first one was written basically to deal with a, a real, some real chaotic problems in the church, particularly one situation where they had to actually excommunicate somebody who wasn't living up to the standards of the faithful. They had, in, in fact, the Apostle Paul told them, like I told you last week, he told them, he said, listen, you need to turn this man over to the devil so that he'll learn not to blaspheme. That's pretty serious stuff. This moral situation that was going on in Corinth was bad enough that they recognized, that Paul recognized if he doesn't deal with this structural flaw in this community, this community was going to be unsafe. And so he tells them, turn this guy over to the devil so he'll learn not to blaspheme. Now, later on, he has to write him another letter saying, now folks, Lord have mercy, you swing from one end to the other. The boy's repented. Let him come back. Again, the Apostle Paul had to write, because when the structure is unsound, the people are unsafe. Katalabete. When the structure is unsound, the people are unsafe. And the Apostle Paul today tells the Corinthians, you are the temple of God. You are the structure that God is constructing. And he's telling this to the entire church. So every one of us make up this holy temple. When I say the church, folks, you know I'm not talking about the building, right? You're the church. You're the construction pieces that God is is using His Holy Spirit to form and to shape you into a fit habitation for God to live in. You are the temple of God. That's what the Apostle Paul tells the Corinthians. And he says that there is no other thing. He said, I've come and I've laid the foundation here for the Corinthian church. And now another man, the, 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 the current priest of the parish, now another man is building. And let every man be careful how he builds. And then Paul says something fascinating. He says, and now gang, if I could, I'd crack open your little skulls and just pour this in. But this is a significant reality. The Apostle Paul makes it very clear to the Corinthians and to us this morning that there is only one foundation. And that foundation isn't an idea. It's not an ideology. It's not a religious philosophy. The one foundation is a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. The whole purpose of us being the temple of God is so that we will reflect and be like Jesus Christ. Make no mistake, every ounce of action and purpose in the Orthodox Christian faith has one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to make you like Jesus Christ. That's your destiny. That's why we do what we do. I had had a lady that was watching our uh, watching our videos on online, and she she wrote a wrote a question there on the YouTube channel, and she said she said I don't get it. She said I, I listen I'm not Orthodox I'm a Baptist. She said but every one of the other guys I see on the Orthodox guys I see on the YouTube all they've got is this black robe. And why in the world is Father Barnabas always dolled out in these fancy robes? And so I I told her, I said, that's a great question. If you don't know what the background is, that makes perfect sense. And I told her, I said, dear, what you're seeing is you're seeing guys that are not in the worship services that are doing their talks. When you see me preaching, I'm preaching on Sunday morning and I'm dressed in the way so that I can serve the divine liturgy. And she said, oh, I, I, I didn't know. 
But even these robes, brothers and sisters, even this, this beauty is meant to communicate to you and to build on the foundation of Jesus Christ so that you will be a fit habitation for God. Now, the Apostle Paul goes on to give a very stark and terrifying warning. And it's the reason why, brothers and sisters, you will see the church throughout the centuries warn you away against behaviors or immorality or actions or beliefs that are dangerous for the building up of the temple of God. Because there are some things that will destroy the action of the Holy Spirit in your life as God is forming you into the temple of God for a fit habitation for himself. There is another force at work in the world that wants to deconstruct or he wants to water down the message or the medicine so that you don't get quite the strength and the the lasting power that the Holy Spirit wants to build in you. <clears throat> there is an enemy afoot. And that enemy takes on all kinds of forms. And that enemy has one purpose. Jesus said it best in John's Gospel. He said that the evil one comes for three reasons. The evil one comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's the evil one's purpose in your life. So those behaviors, those beliefs, those ideologies, those mindsets, those thought patterns, that inattentiveness. Can I run one quick rabbit trail? Um, I love listening to smart people talk. Uh, because that helps me a great deal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a scholar. That's, I was telling some folks that were asking me, oh, Father, would you please write this for us, and would you please write that for us? I said, now listen, you've got to understand something. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, professor. I'm a preacher. That's it. I'm a preacher. I take these big ideas, at least I've tried to, I try to take these big ideas and distill them down so that you'll understand them and apply them directly to your life because, folks, pay attention to me. If you have a religion that doesn't affect every aspect of your life, you're just playing this as a hobby. It's not your faith. Do you understand me? If it doesn't change your thought processes, if it doesn't change your priorities, if it doesn't change the way you act and the way you think, then you do not have a religion, you have a hobby. And hobbies are wonderful, don't get me wrong, but don't expect it to be something strong enough to actually mean something to you, and it certainly won't be strong enough to be passed on to the next generation. It won't. If orthodoxy is just a hobby for you or a cultural decoration, I promise you your grandchildren will not be attending an orthodox church. I promise that to you. It won't happen if this is just a hobby. And you know how I know that? Because I'm watching it happen all over the world. As a father, I can tell you now, my greatest concern is that my children will not have passed on to them a robust enough faith that they'll see why it's worth paying the price to stay orthodox. Even in a world that tells you you're backward or foolish or old-fashioned. So these guys, these brilliant guys were talking, and they were, they were, they were, they were just opening up all kinds of philosophical stuff. One of them was an orthodox guy. It's absolutely brilliant stuff. And they said something that rocked me back on my heels. This guy looked in the camera and said, attentiveness is a moral act. Attentiveness is a moral act. You worship what you pay attention to. Do you hear me? What you, fo what you focus on in your life, what you pay attention to is what you worship. That's your God. The question this morning is, who's your God? The enemy wants you to be attentive to smaller things. The Holy Spirit is trying to construct in you a way of life so that you are focused on eternal things so that you will be built together into the beautiful temple of God. That's why you're here today. 
That's why you come to church. That's why you make the sign of the cross. That's why you fast during the Dormition fast and get ready to celebrate tomorrow. That's why you pay attention to the church year and to the rhythm of prayer throughout the church year so that the Holy Spirit has the, the, the strong and healthy building blocks of truth to form you and to shape you and to make you by grace what Christ is by nature. This morning, the Holy Spirit has a very powerful message for us. It's the message that the Apostle Paul leaves to the Corinthians. The message is this. Those who destroy the temple, God will destroy them. That which is your spiritual enemy, that which is that which keeps you from paying attention to God, God has every intention of destroying that enemy so that it will not hurt you or harm you anymore. God will destroy everyone who destroys the temple. It's one of the reasons why we Orthodox don't cremate. We don't. We don't cremate. Why is that, Father? Because your physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I would no more burn you up than I'd burn this building down. You are the temple of God. You are meant to be constructed in such a way that the world looks at you and says, this is the way everyone should live. That is your purpose. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And God promises that he will never lay another foundation other than his son, Jesus Christ. And your attentiveness will tell who you love. This morning, as we prepare to celebrate the dormition of our most glorious lady, and the very fact that it makes perfect sense that our Lord Jesus Christ took that precious body of his mother, you know the story, right? I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But the, just, to, just suffice it to say, when they went to take Thomas to go see Mary's grave, they opened it up. Nobody there. What happened? The Orthodox have a specific answer to that question. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> but the body's gone. Tomorrow we celebrate the funeral of the Theotokos and the very fact that the flesh and blood of the Theotokos was too precious to leave in the grave. And your blood and body is the same. You are meant to become by grace what Christ is by nature. Do not work against the work of the Holy Spirit to form you into the temple of God. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I pray this was a blessing to you. If it is a blessing to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos. It really does help us a great deal. Speaking of helping us, if you'd like to support this media outreach, go to our Patreon site at Faith Encouraged on Patreon.com. You can also visit us at our website at FaithEncouraged.org and write me at Fr Barnabas at Faith Encouraged. I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless you.